Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's early on the West Coast for our next guest, Miss Elizabeth Stahl. Welcome, welcome, and thank you for being here. This is oh, so, it's my pleasure. Thank you. It is so wonderful to to meet you in person and be able to talk with you. Um, we have a few questions today. That uh, if you've watched any of the other meet and greets, they're uh, they're all the same. <laughs> uh, it's a broken yeah. record, but it's a new artist every time. So that's it, the fun part. It is, and, mm -hmm. and for our viewers today, we have a reveal of your ornament for Artful Webinar, so that's Yay. gonna be awesome. So everyone who is joining us today, please stay with us and ask any questions you want of Lisbeth and we'll get them answered. Of course, if you are watching the replay, thank you so much for doing that as well. And you can still post questions in the comment section and, Liz and tag Lisbeth and she will come back uh, periodically and answer your questions. So here is the most difficult question of all. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you from? Oh my goodness, it's really not a difficult question for me. I'm from the beautiful Pacific Northwest. I live in Tacoma, Washington, and that is about 35 miles south of Seattle and um, on Puget Sound. Um, it's about a two mile short distance. We don't walk there because it's uphill all the way home, but we go down there to walk and um, and it's about mid Puget Sound if you, you're looking at a map. So we're we're right on Puget Sound. And that's Washington State for you East Coast people, because I get asked that every single time I say Washington. Thank so, you. <laughs> yes. But I know where Puget Sound is, but it sounds yes. it's beautiful. Um, mm -hmm, I love it's visiting uh, Seattle and mm -hmm. Mount Rainier and, you know, all that area was yeah. just gorgeous. And it was my husband grew up between um, Mount Rainier and Mount St. Helens, and um, I think that the, the peninsula in Washington is the best kept secret. It's got rainforest and it's gorgeous and it's got its own mountain range and it's just beautiful. But yeah, there's some pretty things around here. But I've, I grew up here too. I was born at Tacoma General. I've always lived in Tacoma. My house I bought is a block away from my grandparents' house that they owned for 57 years. So didn't get too far away. Wow. Well, that's, yeah. it's cool though. I mean, yeah, I like it. I live in a couple towns over from where I grew up, but you know, it's, it's home. I like it. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's home. It's, it's home. I mean, I've visited mm -hmm. many places. I'm sure you have too. And mm -hmm. you're always, it's like, you want to be home. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the minute yeah, you land. I agree. That's awesome. Um, so here's the next wonderful question. Do you come from an artistic family? Oh my, um, I used to say no, but I then have evolved in that um, belief and say yes now. <laughs> and the reason being is that um, my mom's art was a little bit different than the run of the mill art or what I would think of as traditional art. She refinished furniture and refinished antiques. So um, that was her art form. My dad um, was an alcoholic and part of his sobriety and getting sober was he became a potter. And so he threw pottery for many years and um, so he, and he liked to sketch and his sister liked to sketch. And so there were some different things and my mom's sister was a poet. And so there were some very creative artsy things going on. Both my grandma was an incredible um, tailor. And then on the other side, granny, she, she was a knitter. And so there were a lot of different crafts going on or different arts going on. And so I guess, yes, but although I didn't think of it traditionally in like painting sense for many years. Right. But you know, it all, it all is tied together. Is it not? I mean, mm -hmm. when you think of our, what, what rules or, or things we learn mm -hmm. that color, you know, learning color affects everything, whether mm -hmm. you're painting pottery. I mean, I know he, pro he made it, but if he was mm -hmm. to paint the pottery, he has to think of color schemes. He, if, mm -hmm. if you're, any of those things doing anything you have to think yeah. so there's a lot of tools that you learn in painting that 
you learn you, it applies everywhere. Oh, so, it absolutely does. But, absolutely. Uh, yeah, my mom does. I, t I say we all have our languages and you know, mm -hmm. our language is painting with, with mm -hmm. paint. And then the, your fa father's was pottery. Mm -hmm. you no, know, and your mother mm -hmm. had hers and your grandma. So everybody, yeah. my mom has sewing. She's a cloth. Mm -hmm. That's her mm -hmm. language. You yeah. know, she can create anything just by looking at it. She doesn't need that a pattern. That's my grandma. She yeah. has something. Yeah. yeah. Amazing, isn't it? <laughs> it is amazing. It is amazing. But I think I got from her my ability to picture things in dimension um, because that's obviously what she did when she was creating by pictures and that kind of stuff. So. So yep. that's wonderful. That is yep. so wonderful to discover that even after you thought for many years, no. <laughs> well, you know, you just kind of, it's a knee jerk, right? Nobody else paints or nobody else, you know, sketches. And I've been painting my whole life. So yeah, yeah. That, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So, so what, um, well, I can go to that question. So when did you start, when did you start to, to, you know, paint? I am an only child, and um, so, but before you go, oh, one of those. I my don't mom, say that. <laughs> my mom, a lot of people do, but my mom was bipolar, and my parents were divorced when I was really young, so I raised my mother and learned to be a parent that way, although I don't have children of my own now, <laughs> so it was, um, it was, it was unusual sometimes, but I did have the TV and I had animals and those were my entertainment a lot of the time. And I would watch, oh my gosh, this is before Bob Ross, I'm dating myself. I would watch William Alexander <clears throat> on public television. And one year my mom, I think it was for Christmas, but I can't be quite sure because it, I was about five and she has pictures of me and I don't know where they are, but I, cause I haven't found them yet. Um, but I would paint along with him on the TV. And then I would let them dry in my in my bedroom, but then I'd promptly squirrel them away and hide them. I my mom didn't find them until she moved from that house when I was an adult. And so so I started painting when I was five. And then I took my first class in the ninth grade during we had interim, it was called, and we had got to do some choice classes and I took oil painting. Wow. But I grew so, up around the, the corner from a gal who owned a store here um, in toll painting. And um, she's the only person I've known ever to be shut down by the police because her bazaar at her home that she would gather so many people was shut down by the police because of the parking issues <laughs> and the traffic. And so I grew up with this incredible neighborhood mom around the corner who was super artsy, very resourceful. And um, she became a very, very dear friend. And we lost her just a couple of years ago. So, um, but it was, it was, you know, a lot with her and admiring what she did too. So she, yeah, she was, she was, she was something special, Judy. Oh, that's wonderful. So do mm -hmm. you still have those paintings then? Did, did mom give them to you when she found them? She did. And I have, I think I have one of them, but I've again, squirreled it away because it was, they're, they're, they're ridiculously funny, um, but they were mine, you know, but I think I have one of those and one from the ninth grade that I took in, um, in that art class. And um, it was not, I was, I was, my best thing in oils was overworking it. And so that's the one thing, if I were to go back to do oils, I would want to learn how to just leave it alone, you know? It's easier to fix things in acrylics. It's not, it's not in oils. And then I took, I took watercolor even after that. And that was, I didn't have enough control in there. So, you know, just right. That's where I landed in, in acrylics. Well, I mean, it's nice to have those to look back on. I mean, I found in, I was taking out my Christmas things last weekend and I found this little piece of wood that was my first ever decoupaging. Oh, I, and it's it was I took a Christmas card and I cut out Santa mm -hmm. and I decoupaged him on a piece of stained wood. Uh -huh. I mean, it's very simplistic. There's no necessarily creativity involved here, mm -hmm. but it was my first experience in art class to decoupage. Oh, so my it, mom was a great decoupager, too. 
And um, but her her biggest thing, and this is before Pinterest. I mean, it would have been the late sixties. She had no money because when my parents divorced, my mom she just didn't have any money. So one year for Christmas, she took, you know how the the jars that you got things in used to be cut or have designs or um, they were different shapes. And she took them and with silicone, she glued them together into about a three foot long post and then took a, a bowl and turned it upside down for the base and a smaller one for the top. And then she spray painted them and put, um, you know, different kind of a wash over the top of it. They looked like carved wood when she was done with it. And so that's one of the first things around her decoupage, you know, era was, I remember those posts that she did, so. That's amazing because, you know, I see those in the antique stores now mm -hmm. where they take different elements and they glue them together and they make cake plates or, or you know, the, the, multi-tiered dessert trays or whatever yes and i'm yes. thinking beautiful there's nothing original anymore everybody no no because everybody does it and then you find it i i'm i apologize i have to turn away my dog has the cat's dish and it's made of porcelain and he's broken we'll several and i don't want him to get hurt go Kai, get it go get no. it no no leave it come here hi come come here okay he's a rule follower fortunately so um Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> we have two naughty golden retrievers. They're they're very sweet and we love them, but they are a little bit naughty. <laughs> so at five years old, he shouldn't be doing that. So but it gets mama's attention, right? <laughs> oh yeah, you know. He's he's great. <laughs> Oh, that's wonderful. Um, I love, I just, uh, I just love history and, and seeing how you, you've developed, you know, and that's why it's so important to keep some of those first pieces just because mm -hmm. it reminds you where, where your beginnings were. Well, I don't know if you can see on my paint, I should have turned it differently. Up on my packet tower is a Raggedy Ann and Andy, and that's my grandmother's. She made those for me when I was 12, and that's a reminder from where I come. So, oh, wonderful. She made yeah. them. Yeah. Oh my God, that's so precious. So, so precious. Um, so, so when you started to actually, you know, delve into the decorative art industry, um, who was your, who, who was your major influences? Who influenced you the most? Um, well, certainly Judy, who I mentioned earlier, the local gal, um, she steered me in a direction, um, of a teacher who taught me a ton. Um, and I just learned really good foundation skills. So I would say Judy was one. And then locally, you know, Maxine Thomas, she was right down in Portland and um, I got to know her and her things and loved her style and it melded well with my mom's stuff. So it attracted me at first to pieces and projects that would attract, you know, be good for gifts for my mom and that kind of thing. And then Jamie Mills Price and I formed a friendship that, um, you know, just has, has spanned the years now. And um, I, I feel very, very um, in, in sync with her. She has really been the, the person who pushed me into the designing part. I've heard it for many, many years. Um, but then finally, I launched my website in 2008. And um, had a few years there. I had three years where I lost both my parents and had breast cancer. So that I took a little hiatus during that time and then got back to it. And so that's, that's, but she's been a very, um, not only in my painting style, because I've been to every one of her summer seminars except one over the years. And, um, but she is also just somebody who has been my, my, um, just I could go to her with any question. Um, so she's so also she's, been like a mentor. Oh, absolutely. She and Maxine, Max, and um, even Lori Speltz. Lori Speltz has been a huge mentor to me and um, pushed me to think in some business ways that I never would have um, had I not had conversations with her. So those those three are the biggies. Those are the biggies. Oh. And, and, and so are you cancer free now? I am. I am. I'm one of the lucky ones. Yes. I'm one of the lucky ones. Um, had 
um, you know, a seven year anniversary um, this year. And so that was really exciting. And I still see my oncologist regularly so that I make sure that I am. So, um, oh, yeah. How wonderful. How wonderful. Yeah. Sorry so get your mom. mammograms. That's what got me was early detection. Excellent. So, yeah, those yeah. are very important. Yes. So they, um, when did you start teaching? And when you started to teach, was it you were teaching other people's designs or were you, did you start right off with teaching your own designs? Oh gosh, no. Remember I hid my paintings. I, <laughs> there was no way I was going to do that. And um, no, I started teaching about six months after I started and my first toll class was uh, in 1988 or 89. I, I don't know exactly um, which year, but 88 or 89. And um, I started teaching about six months after I started and it was at Judy's shop. And I taught the beginning class because I, um, I'm a teacher, right? So I was able to step those things out and I enjoyed the six, I did a six week um, beginner course at first. And then I started teaching locally and then decided to go back to work full time. And so then I didn't teach weekly classes. You know, it's, it's a different thing when I can turn on my computer and do a lesson than when I had to gather up all my stuff, go set up at the shop. You know, it's just, it's easier and it takes less of my time and time is my most precious commodity right now. Like all of us, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so how long, how long before, um, you know, all the prodding that those ladies oh. did for you, did you, did you finally start designing? How long? Only about how 20 years, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't quite that long, but um, my friend who does all my proofreading and who has really been a push and she calls me the child and um, Mert Gullings, she's, she does a lot of the, the, um, the behind the stage kind of helping out and, and strategizing and the proofreading is huge. She, if, if it weren't for her, I don't know, I wouldn't ever turn out patterns because she really goes at it as a painter and wants to understand each step of the way. And um, doesn't have as much confidence as I think she should have. And so thus, wants to be very, um, very careful to understand every step of the process. So that was um, that. So she had started talking to me about designing when I painted a wall mural in a crafters mall that we met at in 1994. And she says, you should put out a pattern packet on this, you know, this bunny should be a pattern packet, this fence, you know, and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And just kind of pushed it off. Well, that went into many years of those kinds of conversations. And one year I went to Jamie Mills Price's summer seminar and she had a little piece of wood and it was a, it was a contest. And if you design something, we would design something when we went back to our rooms that night and then we would all put them out on a table the next day and then vote on them. And I think we got a $50 gift certificate in her store. Cool. So that was all I needed, right? And so I um, ended up coming up with some ideas and everyone painted one thing and then I came up with something different and that's how um, Chef Boo was born. And so the on my website, I still have the pattern packet for Chef Boo and it's a ghost and he's stirring a pot and he has some magical looking little um, swirls and whirls coming from his big cauldron. And um, so I, I did that on a pin. And when I got home, I had gone, um, I had gotten dropped off on the freeway by my friend to have my husband pick me up to go camping for a week. So when I got home, there was a message on the answering machine and it was Jamie and she, which Jamie doesn't call you. She is a texter. She, um, that's, that's just her, that's her love language. And so she called and left a message and said, um, Don and I have a proposition we'd like to talk over with you. Would you please give me a call? Yeah. And that's when they offered to mentor me. And I kind of liken it to, you know, going to karaoke and getting a record deal, you know, yeah. um, I then was able to have the door to ask any question and have it answered in an honest way. And, um, I am so grateful 
for those people. And again, it was Jamie Mills Price, Maxine Thomas, and Laurie Speltz who have brought me to the dance, so to speak. That is so wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, and and it's a blessing, you know. It's oh a, my goodness. It's a, yes. Such a gift, such mm -hmm. a gift that these lovely ladies took you under their wings. So thank yes. you to those three for doing that and for seeing uh, seeing the artists in you and, and, and nurturing mm -hmm. you to come out. So that's great. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, absolutely. Absolutely. So, and Maxine is my travel buddy. She, um, she and I share a booth at conventions we go to together and we share a room and we have a great time and um, lots of laughs. And so that's become a, a great, a great friendship, friendship. too. Yeah. yeah. Very valuable friendship. Yeah. Yes. So what is your favorite subject matter? Do you have a favorite subject matter? Something you like painting more than the other things? I don't know if it's one thing. I think of things in seasons. Um, and I definitely gravitate towards fall and winter the most. Um, I like the colors and I know that I do like spring and I, I do like summer but fall and winter are my favorite. I love a, a cold, crisp day with bright sunshine. That's that's a happy day for me. I love that. Even though warm days are nice, don't get me wrong in the, you know, but um, I do like the fall and winter time. So I tend to gravitate toward fall and winter. There's just so many fun things to paint. Um, I could probably paint Halloween um, 24 seven, really, because I, I just love it because I want to do whimsical, fun Halloween and not spooky, scary Halloween. And um, so, you know, I love that. And I love Santa faces and Santa faces on oyster shells are what kind of got me started. Um, that was my first convention class. And I filled um, two classes of 75, I think, my very first time out. So that was interesting. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, it was a I, happy I did, surprise. I know uh, one of my friends who lives in Tacoma showed me uh, an oyster shell. She can't, she might have used your design. I didn't ask her, but uh -huh. she Santa face on an oyster shell. And that was the first time I'd seen that. And it was just well, sweet. It's, it's been funny because I can't tell you how many seasoned painters I've talked to who have gone out on that breezy limb and taken a chance and taken my Santa faces on an oyster shell and then come to me afterward and said, you know, because you can't have a pattern, you can't trace a pattern on something that's concave like that. And the oyster shells in the Pacific Northwest are large. I mean, six to eight inches is nothing. I mean, it's not unusual. And so you have a big, nice surface to paint on, but they've come to me after and said, you know, I feel so accomplished. It's one of my favorite pieces I've ever done because I feel like I was able to do this and didn't think I could at the beginning. Because we start with an oval of a flesh tone and that's, and they choose the oval and I call it freehand with a net to support them. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that's, that's, it's, that part of it has been really a lot of fun. I get, I, Promoting it as freehand with a net sounds like, yeah, I could do that because yeah. I don't freehand, you know? <laughs> no, that's what I call it the painting F word because nobody wants to even go there, you know, no, that lettering. Gracious. Yeah. When, when you say any, when you say in classroom, okay, we're going to do it without a pattern. They're like, what? Oh, oh, what do you mean? So, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and I've even, you know, people who don't realize that, um, they've bought patterns and then they'll contact me and say, this didn't have a line drawing. It's got a step-by-step -step in the pattern packet, but it doesn't have a line drawing. I said, well, that's because I never know what's going to be where on your shell. It, the hat might need to go one way or the other. And then I, I usually have said, you know, I'm going to refund your money, but I, I hope that if you like it, you'll come back and buy another one. And I don't think I've had anyone ever not come back. So that's pretty cool. That yeah. is pretty cool. Yeah. So how is it, how do you, the next question is, is how do you come up with your designs? Oh dear. <laughs> I didn't promise they wouldn't get harder. <laughs> this is a scary place, this brain of mine. Um, I just, I will 
think of something and I try and and inspire myself. Um, oh, it can be all different things. It can be, you know, a bird walk on Facebook or a bird walk on Pinterest. And that's not to say that I'm copying something because many times I'm not looking at anything that's crafty of, or, um, or maybe I'm looking at some, some stuffies that people have selected. Um, I try not to look at other artists because I don't trust my brain enough to not unintentionally copy something. Um, I'm notorious for going to an artist that I think this, this is flavored with them and saying, hey, did you do anything like this? Because I don't want to put it out there if, if I, you know, did something. A misstep on my part would be a misstep. It's not, um, I don't ever want to steal someone's idea. Mm -hmm. So I'm really careful about that. And then I sketch a lot. Um, I like grabbing those challenges off Pinterest. If you look under drawing challenges or drawing prompts, there's, there's like one a day for April and there's one a day for June. And then there's, you know, in 2015, this was the December one. And in 2020, this is the December one. So there's a list. And so I have it right here actually in my handy dandy sketchbook is a post-it note that I've recently done. And this sketchbook, oh dear, it's nobody else would understand it, I don't think. But um, I put a post it note, and on my post it note, if you can see it, to your, yeah, there, there you we go. go. It's got, it's just got this list of different things. And this was a prompt list that was on the internet. It was free because it was all listed there. And um, then I just kind of, and I end up drawing something. So the first one was stocking. Um, and then I've got stuff falling out everywhere. And so in my sketchbook, I drew kind of the start of a stocking that I thought of. And then a couple of choices, thinking of an ornament, a couple of choices that could go inside the stocking. Yeah, a girl or so, a boy. Yeah. Yeah. And so then then I'll go to a different one and do something else. My reindeer one was not nearly as successful that I tried. Um, and then there's lettering in here. There's all kinds of things. So um, it's just that's mostly how it goes. Um, this summer I was concerned because one of the ways that I get inspired is at conventions and going and teaching seminars because talking to other painters, it just re-energizes you. Um, but Zoom has taken over that social media kind of face-to-face -face has taken over a little bit. But I asked Lori Speltz um, if I could take her Teamworks class. And her, it, for those of you who don't know, her Teamworks class encourages you to kind of go outside your box and try to design things that are, are different um, or unique about the original design, but take the original design and make it your own kind of a deal. And um, I said, I know that this isn't the, you know, exactly what you're teaching, but I need something that's going to keep this inspiration kind of feeling going. And so um, long, long story, not quite as long, <laughs> I'm not gonna say short. Um, she taught a lesson during the first Teamworks um, session on how she draws um, sunflowers. And that's where the, the long sunflower signboard that I taught this fall came from. I didn't think it was especially special, but um, Heidi Allison in California, my friend in California, she did and was relentless. And my dog has that stinking bowl again, Cindy. <laughs> Kai, no get over here thank you oh see naughty just naughty <laughs> so anyway so that's that's that cool gotta love those dogs though oh. <laughs> so i just want to take a moment to say uh 45 people who are watching thank you so much for joining us this morning we still have uh many more questions to go but should you have any questions please put them in the comment section and we'll uh, get them answered you have some fans here today elizabeth who have taken yeah. classes with you and uh, they're saying good morning from all over the place oh. patty 
Patty says, love your Santa's on oyster shells. And she really enjoyed your class. Um, so Wendy Goldberg is here. I know oh, she's a native of your area. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so a lot of people are here. So thank you so, so much for joining us. And please. Oh, thank yes. you for being here, you guys. I see some familiar names that are popping up on my um, notifications here as, as we're going. So thank you. Excellent. So yeah, so she'll go back after Elizabeth will go back after and read them. So um, but if you do have questions, you can ask them and, and I'll ask them for you. So wonderful. So the next question is, what is your favorite medium? <laughs> Not that we don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I do like acrylics. And um, but honestly, I would probably use like Jasonia's or another, um, you know, tube acrylic, if it weren't for teaching, it's just much easier to be, um, to be specific in the paint colors and not mix. So I teach with um, DecoArt and I love DecoArt's product. It's very consistent and um, I, my heart hurts for them right now. And the demand that's there and the desire to provide for painters because they've really bent over backwards historically to serve us. Um, and they still are, it just doesn't maybe feel like that to everyone, but be patient, they're coming. And so I do like acrylics, but I also like to dabble in sculpture. So paper clay and, you know, quick wood and that kind of thing too. So um, that's, that's just kind of a little a little add-on but I do like to embellish my um, painting and so if it's got sparkle if it's got bling if it's you know a little something a little um, charm or something I like to add those kinds of things too and make it dimensional. Do you, do you have a quick wood piece or a paper clay piece handy for you to show? Uh -uh. Nope I sure don't. Um, one of the things though that I did do that's fairly easy to to picture I think is on um, some of my oyster shell, the, the beach scapes or seascapes, um, on the back or on an edge, I created maybe some little, little shells and a um, sea star and some things like that and put those on the shell. And I've also used those kinds of shapes to kind of hide on shells if you want them to sit up. Sometimes you have to mess around with um, adding some things to the back so that you can get it to sit just right. And so quick wood helps to do that. And so, you know, if you're using a shell, no matter the subject of the, the Santa, even the, if it's not the nautical Santa that I have, um, it's easy to add other shells and beach oriented things so that, um, you know, it, it just kind of goes together, you know? So that's something that I've enjoyed doing and kind of hiding the, the fix. Um, which is trying to get the shell to do what I want it to do. Right. So, um, so you, if anyone wanted to see those designs, they're mm -hmm. on your website yes. or your Facebook yes. page. So, and I put mm -hmm. those links up in the description of this post. So you oh, can great. click on them and go check those out. Cause I will, after this interview is over, <laughs> I, I don't dabble with quick wood or paper clay. I have a friend who loves using that stuff. Um, and so I, if I have to, I give it to her and say, can you make me this? Cause I don't want to touch it. Well, some newer learning and that I've had on Quickwood um, that has really made it more pleasurable for me is um, the to use just an extender of some sort. And I put it on my, if you put it on your fingers, I don't like to, to model things with it, um, with gloves on. I just can't feel it and the gloves don't fit right and all that. But I also don't like it because the Quickwood, uh, even though it's not globby, it it still sticks to your fingers. It's like super glue when it gets on your fingers. Um, it feels funny for a couple of days and I don't like that. But the, the extender, if you put a little bit of the extender on your fingers, it also leaves fingerprints off of the Quickwood. And Quickwood can be sanded. So it's really a neat little trick that I didn't know when I was writing these pattern packets, but I certainly will include in the next ones. And I know um, Shara Reiner and Jane Allen use, um, I believe, silicone glove from Avon, which is uh, a very, um, a very established 
not only brand, but that silicone glove, my mom sold Avon when I was a child and it was around, but it's, it's touted for being kind of a, um, a protection in your hands, like, like gardening lotion and stuff. And so that will, the silicone glove does help too, as I understand it. I have not tried it on my own, but I know that the extender works because I've tried that and it's, it's a great, it's a great fix. Oh, I got it. Yeah. I heard about that. So I should try that. Yeah. Um, both yeah. the extender. Cause I still have extender so yeah. I can try that and see if it works. Cause yeah, I don't like the sticky stuff. Mm -mm. I, it's not my, I have a tactile issue. <laughs> I do too. I do too. <laughs> I, it's oh, like, it's just, every, it's like anyone who knows me knows this. So that like, I, yeah, it's just not happening. <laughs> I stay yeah. away from things like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, do you have, a, well, before we go to the next question, there was uh, somebody here and, and this opens up to what I had asked you earlier. Mm -hmm. um, have you, or will you teach a zoom class on the Santa face oyster shell? You know, I would love to, but you can get it for free. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can go over to my YouTube channel. And it's just Lizbeth Stahl. So if you go to YouTube and then just type in Lizbeth Stahl, it'll pop right up. And there is a free demo in there of how I paint the oyster shell spaces. So, you know, I would love to teach a Zoom class or I could teach maybe one of them that ha is themed like the, the nautical Santa. I'm not gonna lie, that's my favorite. Um, and um, it's not, it's not good to have a favorite child that that is. So just, um, but I could teach another class as well. So I'll keep that in mind, but there is a free one available on YouTube. Cool. Um, so, cause I'm thinking that I have guest teachers every month on this, on this group, artfully connected mm -hmm. with Cindy Harrison that do little mini, mini things. Mm -hmm. So if you were, if you were interested in, and willing, we could do a little live mini, little mini project sure. and uh, on the Facebook group and they, yeah. you know, that would be wonderful. That'd I would be, be happy to do that. That'd be so wonderful. So what is your favorite technique? Do you have a favorite technique? Um, hmm. I'm thinking, cause I have a lot of go-tos, but probably I'm a soft painter and I paint with layers of color. So probably um, side loading and doing it well and, and learning. Once I learned how to control that color because you can get it too light just as easy as you can get it too dark. And um, so I do love side loading and then dry brushing. Dry brushing is the quick way to a great dimensional um, image and so you can you know we need we need um a lot of a lot of spectrum of color when we want to paint a shape and the dry brushing helps us achieve that really quickly cool i i, I found dry brushing um I, I never realized that dry brushing would give you the same beautiful look of depth as a, a side load float or a bullseye mm -hmm. float, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, there was a artist from Maine, Marsha Weiser, mm -hmm. and she used it and her fruit was just beautiful. So yeah. I could achieve a beautiful look and not have to put, you know, too much, too much into it to get no. it yeah. right the first time. The one thing, the one class that I took, I was able to take a little two hour short at the last hoot. Um, and it was Holly Hanley and it was her pumpkin spice project. And she, here she was teaching this cute project at convention in a two hour class, but I had never taken from her and I just wanted to take from her, you know, and she was right next door to us in our booth. And so I was able to take from her. And the amazing thing was here at this convention class, it was a, it was a sizable piece. It was over 12 inches, I think, you know, like maybe 12 by 14, almost the whole class got all the way done with it in two hours. And that was because of dry brushing. And that's when I was in, I was um, exposed to the the lunar blenders and I love those. I I do love the um I use all Josonia brushes and it's you know they're 
anyway, don't get me started on brushes. There's that's use the your next favorite. question. <laughs> okay, use your favorite brushes. But um, doing those that class was um, was an eye opener too on color and and being a little bit more heavy handed than I normally am and a little less um, careful, you know, putting color on. So it was it was fun class. Cool. There's um, let's see go back to this. Uh, Joanne says, I have painted your gnome for the holidays ornaments. I want to paint your North Pole Express. Hmm. So you should do a class on that maybe. Oh, that North Pole Express. <laughs> that is my brain going bananas. And my friend that I mentioned earlier who does my proofreading, the the expletives she would say if you brought up the words North Pole Express just just after not mentioning how much time she spent with it trying to figure it all out and make sure it made sense but the conversation on the phone to edit was probably two hours I mean so it is a long detailed process and project but I think worth it in the end and if you're familiar with my gnomes if you've painted my gnomes that's going to be um, half the battle because I think there's five of them on that project but there's a lot of embellishment and it's a fun fun project so it sounds like we'll have to teach a class yeah it sounds like that could be a you know like a two or three part uh, oh it would seminar. be <laughs> that'd be yeah. really cool yeah um, that's we might have to do that we might that, have to do that I would love it. I, I bet yeah. you they would too. Yeah. That would um, be fun. <laughs> Rosie was saying your favorite technique is detail. So do you think she knows you? <laughs> yes, Rosie knows me. Um, and one of the funniest things was I have this stitch and spider, I call her, and it's a knitting spider. And um, she's holding two knitting needles, the spider is, and there are little pieces of yarn cast on right so she's knitting she has to have the cast on yarn right well each one of those stitches is highlighted and shaded now even i know that's ridiculous but in teaching it somebody shouts out like in a movie theater you know would be in dead quiet you know oh for the love <laughs> And I think there was something referring, you're just like Jamie or something like that. And I think that's a compliment. I'm sure it maybe wasn't intended. And the whole class laughed and it was a very, you know, it was a, a light moment. But yeah, I do like the detail. And thank you, Rosie. Rosie's my elbow buddy at um, Jamie's seminars. We've been elbow buddies before at the tables. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, she's a lovely lady. Yes, she is. A lot of fun. So now this gets back to what you were saying a few minutes ago. What is your favorite brush? <laughs> my favorite brush. Well, oh my goodness. You guys who are regulars with me, you know what my favorite brush is. Um, it's the oval wash brush that Jasonia has out. And it is, um, it is a workhorse. Um, I have this poor tired thing right here within arm's reach. This is an oval wash that has base coated literally hundreds of convention pieces. Um, and it, it still, it still does, it still does great. But on a newer one, so this is, this is a one inch oval wash. So you can see to it better. To your left. There you go. Yeah. Um, it's a huge brush, but look at the belly on that. And when you get it wet, that holds a lot of water, but it also keeps a nice flat um, chisel edge. And if I get that particular brush loaded, I can go around the, an entire tray without having to reload. Um, I might have to pick up a little more paint, but that brush is great for long hauls. Um, the, you know, when you're doing a long, like my long boards that have uh, Lady Long Legs and the Holly Jolly Gnome, they're 23 inch boards. You can do both of those 23 inch lengths with one load of that particular brush. That's a one inch though. But they are also amazing for snow. It's all I use for snow to paint snow on something. And um, I thought I had something out that had snow on it right here. I guess I don't, not right here. And, oh yeah, I do. Here's this is not the this is not the ornament for the the club, so I can show you this. But 
you can see on the bottom here that there is um, some depth and a lot of um, layering. It looks like it took hours and hours for that snow, but it doesn't. This snow is easy to do because of the water in that brush and the way it's shaped. The other thing that's great for is clouds, um, but it's, it's a great brush. And then the smaller size of that particular brush, um, it, it goes all the way down to a quarter or an eighth inch. I don't remember which. They're great for base coating because they have the best of all worlds. They keep a chisel edge really nicely. They have that rounded shape that um, we all like in the filberts for base coating, or a lot of us do. And um, it's just a really nice brush. The other thing that it's not is years, years ago, the Possibilities brush came out. Possibilities brush was not my friend, not gonna lie. I wanted it to work. I wanted it to be great, but it, it wasn't. And so when I tried this one, um, I asked Mark Jansen, what is the difference? Because they look exactly the same. And he said that the Possibilities brush has a crimped fiber. So it doesn't hold a chisel edge like this does. Um, this black select fiber that they've been using is amazing, amazing. And I really, really like it. It's my happy place. But that being said, even though I use Jasonia, part of it is that's what I'm used to. So find a brush you like, find a brush that works hard for you, has all of the qualities that you love in a brush and stick with it. Um, that's my, you know, there's not going to be a magic bullet for, for, you know, what, what's going to make you the best painter. It's practice, right? Mm -hmm. So um, that's really learn about what your brushes can do for you. But that's my favorite. Cool. So again, and I, I don't guess. sell them. So just so you know, I, I love these not brushes, any, but I don't sell them. Not, get any on that. <laughs> no, no, you should. <laughs> I know. I know. Tell Mark Jansen. <laughs> so I just want to take a second again to thank everyone for being here so far. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment section and we'll get them answered. Um, let's see. Chris says she doesn't lie. It's really, it really is her fave. <laughs> So we Chris need to, knows she's been in every one of my zoom classes. We all need to get one. Let me tell you. They're great. Okay. So what, I mean, you just gave us an awesome tip on, um, on, you know, basically saying use the brush that you're comfortable with mm -hmm. and do the practice. But is there another tip, Mike? Cause my next question is what is the best tip that you could give somebody? Um, well, the tip that was given to me that I am eternally grateful for is take from as many different teachers as you possibly can. Um, and that is critical. I have learned something in, in all of the classes I've ever taken. Some of them I've learned what not to do, um, you know, either from a painting perspective or a teaching perspective. Um, but then there's many, many, many more of them far and wide, the, the majority of them that I've learned something from. And so that's why I still take classes whenever I can. Um, and I always learn something. And so take from as many people as you can. Um, what's the other thing? Probably my favorite tip is to concentrate on how to fix things. Um, my friend Judy that I've mentioned several times, she said, you'll know you're an artist when you can fix your own mistakes. And, you know, so that's that with that come, you have to have experience and you have to have the ability to stick with something. Um, I can proudly say I've never sanded a design off. Um, I've never hated it that much um, or needed to keep the wood piece that long, <laughs> you know, if I you know, uh, another piece of advice was Peggy Harris years ago, and this is secondhand. I didn't hear her say this, but good friends did. Um, if you don't finish a project, that's okay. Thank it for what it taught you. Put it in the fireplace, put it in the trash, whatever you like, but you learned what you were supposed to learn from that piece and move on. So there's a, there's guilt associated with those UFOs sometimes. And so um, I guess those are my it's kind of all related. So um, those are my pearls of wisdom for that. That Yeah, that's very good. And I should call it pearls of wisdom. I love that. <laughs> but those are very good 
Very good. And I love both the people that gave them to you, or all of them, because they're, I love Peggy Harris. Oh, yeah. She's wonderful. Um, so here is the moment. <laughs> what project are you teaching for Artful Webinars? Well, oh, my goodness. I am obsessed with gnomes, first of all. And so I have to preface it with that. I know that some people are tired of them. I will never be tired of gnomes, I'm sorry to say. Um, my grandma Gordon, who lived right down the street, she called them gnomes. Now she knew that they were called gnomes, but she always called them gnomes. So they make me smile every single time. So I did a moose for the first time. And here they are. And um, you can see there's lots of bling. And in those moose antlers, which are called shovels, I have learned, um, they hold things. And so his have um, ornaments. And I don't know if you can really tell, but it's really bedazzled. I can. And yeah, so there will be, there will be a kit offered. It will have this project um in it and all the bling i love to put the kits together so you get the whole kit and caboodle get it cottage caboodle the whole kit and caboodle you get when you get one of my kits so that it will have this and it will likely have a companion piece which is the one i alluded to earlier oh imagine it has a yellow dog in it and um this is just a little north pole antlered dog but I have another one started, but this is, this is the one I'll be teaching with the, the moose and the, and the gnome and buffalo plaid. Do you know, I'm, I'm a little detail oriented. Can you tell? <laughs> Sorry, it's sickness. It really is. I um, love how you, uh, your attention to detail is just spot on. <laughs> And I love it. And I didn't, when you sent me the photo, I didn't notice all the, the actual gems on the horn and the, and the ornaments oh. in the, in the, it, that were, yeah. That and is. I know that somebody will, cause it always happens. Um, somebody will say, where do you get all your Savarsky crystals? Okay. I got a big secret for you guys. And, um, you'll never, ever buy Savarsky crystals anywhere else again, but on Amazon, you can get amazing they're they call them savarsky crystals they're glass crystals i know for certain i don't know if they're for certain you know the savarsky the real ones but they are glass um you can get them and they come in this little it almost looks like an egg carton with little flip lids um and i can post the link on my website or on my facebook page um and it's, it's for nail art though, you guys, it's amazing. And they've got the little teeny tiniest up to the big, um, you know, the ones that really bedazzle. So um, it is, it's really a great thing. And you get like 500 pieces for like 10 bucks. And so it's, it's great. And if you, you know, shared with a friend, you could get several colors. They have colors I've never seen before. One's called Paris that's got some blue and some Aurora Borealis to it. So very, very nice. And those are on Amazon and they're nail art flat little crystals and they're true crystals, not plastic. Cool. Yeah. So everyone is asking, when is it? And I posted it's July oh. 13th. I wasn't very good about that. That was a detail I forgot. It didn't match anything that I was wearing, apparently. <laughs> oh, so yeah, July. I drive myself nuts. I drive myself nuts with stuff. So it's yeah. okay. Everyone has those moments. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, yeah it's in July. So the um, registration for that will be opening up probably, I'm going to say because she's got kits and you're going to all want them, I'll probably mm -hmm. open it up in um, May, the beginning of May, so that you have a good two months to get the supplies and do the homework before class starts. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be on artfulwebinars.com under Ornament Club. So what else, where else are you teaching? I am, well, I have another um, Christmas in July opportunity. And for SDP, I'll be teaching um, a class for them in their, um, oh, what do they call it? The big, 
the academy? I don't know. It's their new seminars and stuff. The, it's like the an academy. The academy. The academy. Thank you. And so I'll be teaching a piece for them. I don't know what it is yet. It's still kind of mulling around in my head. So I'm doing that. Um, I am also going to be doing some free projects. Um, Lori Speltz has started a new um, group called Crafters and Creators Mean Business. And it's similar to her old book series that was on um, doing business as a painter. And remember that she had like painters mean business and it was how to do things for um, boutiques and those kinds of things. So she's doing a group on that that's really helping people to do that. Well, along with that is going to come a live marketplace and a place where people can buy things that other painters or creators of any kind can sell. So it's not just going to be painters. It could be, um, I could go on there and sell my pattern packets or my kits. There could be people who make cards or there could be people who watercolor or, you know, I don't know, uh, weave baskets. It could be just anything. And she will have that. But in order to find that site, she and I and Maxine Thomas are going to be offering some free classes so that you have a reason to navigate to that site and find it. And so um, I don't have a date for it, but I know it's in the near future. And um, this is the free project that I'll be teaching. And I don't know if you can see, it's it's still with my, my stencil that's a snowflake in the background, but I used a metallic this time. And it will be um, this little gnome and his friend that will be the free project. So that's one that's coming up. But again, I don't know the exact date, but it's going to be soon. And then I've got a new thing that I'm kind of still chewing on how it will be coming out in the next week, though, um, what I'm going to do. And it has to do with kitten caboodles. Um, but this one is still not finished, but I'll show it to you because I just think she, I just think she is so stinking cute. Um, so there's no no Valentine's stuff out there. There nobody paints Valentine's stuff. And I love Valentine's Day. It's one of my favorite things. What could be better than celebrating friendship, love, all of that stuff? Okay, the pink and red together, not so crazy about, but the rest of it is all perfect for me. So this is what I've been working on. And it says catch the love bug. And this little Nomi, he's riding on a little no or on a little love bug that I created. And he's got lots and lots of detail with him, but oh my goodness, you guys, look at this. Now, who could say no to a bug that's wearing yellow tennis shoes, purple socks with ruffles on them? I mean, come on. And so um, I just thought she was too cute. So she's got her red lipstick on and she's truly a love bug. So um, that's coming up. Um, in a, I'll, I'll be ta talking about that um, a little bit in, on my site class? soon. Mm -hmm. It's going to be, it's not quite a class. It's kind of um, a new thing. Okay. So, we'll look forward to hearing yeah. more about that because that yeah. is adorable. And you're Thank so you. right. So people can find you um, on your website. You want to mm -hmm. just say it again? And your... uh, it's www.lizbethstall.com. So I'm trying and to your... keep it easy. And you have a, a Facebook? Yes, and it's Cottage Caboodle dash Lizbeth Stall. You can always friend me on my personal page and then just know that I try not to put any painting things on there because my family and um high school buddies because I do the class reunion so I have all my 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 class on there um I try not to you know bore them with all the painting stuff because they might not be interested so you're welcome to friend me though you, you're welcome to to follow me on my business page and too. do you have a, a any YouTube or Pinterest or any other place I have a personal Pinterest board and you're welcome to follow that um it's it's pretty big. It has some of my stuff on it. I'm a little bit hesitant to um, post a lot of original stuff on there because I've heard horror stories with designers, but I do have the YouTube also. And the YouTube has been a lot of fun. And in the next week or so, it might be 
towards the end of the month though. I'm gonna give myself a little grace there. Every Tuesday in my other job, I work as an instructional coach. Every Tuesday I record um, a story and for the children in the elementary school and I read aloud a book. And so I'm gonna post those on my YouTube though because I think you know, there's a lot of people out there that are homeschooling their grandparents that are watching children or, you know, just want to share something fun with a child. You could both watch the book and then talk about it later. So I'm going to post my stories that I've I've shared with um, the kids at school. And there's some great books on there. I love children's literature. So um, that's my love. So those those will be going on my Facebook or on my YouTube channel, too. Awesome. So for people who have grand grandbabies mm -hmm. who are home because of COVID, um, mm -hmm. great story time, like when you take them to the library for story time and yeah. stuff like that. So that's and I that's that's my you know, if I I always tease that I could teach I could I can teach reading, dog on it. I, I know how to teach reading. And so you know, read read aloud is one of the bright spots of my my week now, um, in order to, you know just, I want, I want kids to love reading. I want them to be lifelong readers. Excellent. So that concludes our hour, but thank you so, so much, um, Elizabeth, for being here and for being a part of the Art for Webinars family. Oh, and, thank you. Uh, thank you all for taking time out of your morning to spend with us. And uh, Elizabeth will go back and check all the wonderful <laughs> comments and any questions that you might have posted that I missed. And if you're watching the replay, please go ahead and, you know, um, post any questions you want. Thank you for watching the replay. And she'll, if you tag her, she'll know that you asked a question and she'll get back to you on that. Thank you so much, Cindy, for taking all the time that you do, not just this morning, but in all that you've done to get us together as painters and um, find a way to make all of this new world stuff work. Um, it's made a big difference. So thank you for your time and effort too. Oh, thank you so much. So everyone have a wonderful rest of your day. Um, don't forget that next week we have a free ornament done by Sandy Greco uh, and the pattern, the free pattern is on the, in the group under files. <clears throat> I have a tickle. And also too, we have Lydia Steves doing a blue jay. So you're going to want to um, hang around for that too. So I believe those are both next week. So until then, have a wonderful rest of your week. Bye now. Bye.